In short, the difference between response times and input lag is that response times measure how quickly the liquid crystals in your display's panel can change colour, and input lag is how long it takes for the monitor to process and start displaying a new frame. That's it. If that's all you wanted to know, thanks for watching my YouTube short. If you'd like to know a bit more though, stick around because this is really interesting stuff. I'll start with response times, which is a field I've come to know fairly well thanks to developing my open source response time tool, which as always you can pick up at osrtt.com. The basic idea here is that your display, if it's a liquid crystal or LCD display, is made up of absolutely tiny little light gates made up of, well you probably guessed it, liquid crystals. It's generally made up of three per pixel, a red, green and blue subpixel, and those basically are sort of variable blinds that block some or all of the light coming from the backlight behind the panel. Taking a closer look at one of those subpixels, it looks something like this. Actually, it looks nothing like this at all, but this is about as good as my artistic skills can provide, so this is what we're going with. The backlight can be shining as much as it likes, but you'll still see black because the liquid crystals are aligned in such a way that it blocks that light coming through. Once the crystals start opening though, light can start shining through. A response time measurement is measuring how quickly those crystals can go from one state to another, such as, say, fully closed, to fully open, which would be RGB0 to RGB255. One of the interesting things that can happen is something called overshoot. Let's say that you are asking the display to go from a slightly open position, say RGB51 or 20% open, to RGB153 or 60% open. If you use a feature your monitor offers called overdrive, what that does is set the target to a higher value than what you asked it for. So in this case, it might set it to RGB 204 instead, or 80% open, which makes the crystals react much more quickly. Then, when the next frame comes around, it sets it back to what you actually asked it for, and if it timed it right, it won't have actually gone past the target. Most of the time, though, it does. And any light that makes it through past the target amount is what we call overshoot. These figures are often represented as heat maps like this. This is from my last video on the AOC AG275QX and QXN, which you can check out after this video. And you can see that the QX, the IPS model, is relatively fast. The majority of its results are within the refresh rate window, meaning they took less time than the time between new frames, which is fantastic. Looking at the maximum overdrive mode though, well that reveals a bit of a problem. Almost every result went well past the target value, sometimes ludicrously too high. For some context, here is a graph of the light level output during one of those transitions. See the, the flat line at the end? That's the, the target light level. See how high the spike goes above that line? Well, that's the overshoot. While we have this graph up, graph up, now is a good time to mention that different people measure the response times and overshoots in different ways. Tim from Hardware Unboxed trims off 3% of the RGB values off of the top and bottom, and then measures only the rising time. As soon as the light level crosses the target, that's it. Personally, I prefer using a fixed RGB5 tolerance and measuring what I call the perceived response time, which includes the overshoot time. That means that I keep counting until the change has fully completed, minus that RGB5 tolerance. The original VESA standard still quotes it as measuring 10% of the light level as a tolerance and only the initial rising time only. That would be here, um, which, which basically covers none of the transition 
and now you can understand why manufacturers can claim that every monitor is a one millisecond monitor. Now moving on to input lag figures, this is generally pretty simple too. There are two different kinds of input latency, on display latency and total system. Total system is the one you might be more familiar with, which is how long it takes for you to do an action, like left clicking your mouse, and have that action start showing up on screen. This is fine for an end user to test with, or for direct comparative testing, but isn't so great for just quoting figures in a monitor review. On display latency, however, is much better, as that's measuring how long it takes for the monitor to take a new frame in and then in from the graphics card and then process it and then start actually drawing it on screen. The biggest task there is converting the, the digital stream of RGB values that make up a frame into a matrix of voltages to set each pixel to, which includes any overdrive settings, any color and brightness settings, and a load of other stuff too. Most monitors though, only take one or two milliseconds to do that per frame, which is pretty remarkable. Now, I think for this video, I'm going to leave it there, but I've already done much deeper dives into both response times and input lag in videos already on the channel. So if you want to know more and more in depth, definitely go check those out. If you happen to be a reviewer or an enthusiast and want to be able to test both of those metrics, head over to osrtt.com and pick up an OSRTT Pro unit. They are hand-built, validated, and shipped by me. Uh, it takes a lot of time. And I've spent over a year and a half working on this to be the best tool for reviewers like me. I use it in every monitor or laptop review, and I'm constantly adding new features, so definitely go check it out. If you don't fancy picking one up though, you can still support me and these uh, videos in the channel by hitting the subscribe button, turning on the bell notification icon, becoming a YouTube member or a patron, picking up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or using some of the other affiliate links that are in the description down below if you happen to be interested in picking up a monitor like this one or uh, a few other things. Also, Overclock GK links are down there if you're buying from there. Uh, and also, you can check out plenty of other videos in the end cards as well. I have a whole load of them on monitors and the response time tool and everything like response times and input lag, so definitely go check those out. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.